Well, we are learning deals. And how long? He kept quiet about that. We have Team Fox coverage. Ari Fleischer and Kim Strassel are standing by with reaction. But let's begin with Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel. He's live in Washington. Hey, Mike. Danny, good afternoon. Fox has reported at least some of the investigation of Hunter Biden's business and tax activities dates back to 2018. In other words, the entire time that his father was a presidential candidate. The Wall Street Journal reports Attorney General Bill Barr knew about the numerous investigations looking into Hunter Biden's business and financial dealings since at least this spring and worked to keep the probes out of public view during the election. A spokeswoman for the attorney general declined to comment to Fox Today. Barr signaled in May he wanted to keep the criminal justice system out of the presidential election. And as long as I'm attorney general, the criminal justice system will not be used for uh, partisan political ends. And this is especially true uh, for the upcoming elections in, in November. But a key ally of President Trump says that was unfair to the president. Well, you know what you did? You influenced the election by suppressing uh, very important investigations that were going on that you've been doing for a long time. How long did the FBI have that laptop for Hunter Biden? About a year now. Why did they suppress it? What were they doing? Why did we not know any of this? It certainly put Attorney General Barr in an awkward spot with the president, who was pretty vocal leading up to the election. A We've got to prosecutor. get the attorney general to act. He's got to act. And he's got to act fast. He's got to appoint somebody. This is major corruption, and this has to be known about before the election. This has to be done early. So the attorney general has to act. There are those on the other side who say Barr did the right thing by trying to keep the Justice Department out of partisan politics. Dana. Mike Emanuel, thank you so much. Let's bring in Fox News contributors Ari Fleischer and Kim Strassel. So much to cover, and I got a little bit of time extra with you, so that's great. Um, I want to play for you, Ari, um, some sound from, remember Bob Alinsky and the idea awesome. that more people within the Biden world knew about this? Listen to what he had to say. I remember looking at Jim Biden and saying, how are you guys getting away with this? Like, aren't you concerned? And he sort of looked at me and he laughed a little bit and said, uh, Plausible deniability. He said that out loud? Uh, yes, he said it directly to me, one-on-one -on -one in a cabana at the Peninsula Hotel after about an you know, hour-and-a-half, two-hour meeting. Now we, that we know that this probe is actually wider than just Hunter's tax issues, how does that sit with you? Well, he's also gotten away with it because that's what you can do when you have the press on your side. Look, one of the things that made America, America, and has always allowed us to deal with issues, and if there was wrongdoing, it was exposed, was because the press would dig for it. They used to call it without fear or favor, but now they have both fear and favor. They favor the Democrats, and they fear doing anything that would benefit Donald Trump. So all these charges that came up in the campaign when the New York Post first reported about this topic, the press suppressed it. I have never seen such a willful decision by the media to ignore news and deride the people who raised questions. Any investigative reporter would have smelled the story, but they were told to stop. There was no digging. You can get away with it if you're a Democrat. Now, someone that did report on it is on our show right now. This is Kim Strassel here, of course. And Kim, I saw the New York Post cover today called the Hunter cover up. And of course, then there's the Wall Street Journal editorial board talking about this today. And one of the things I thought about when I found you were on the show today is, did you wake up and wonder where do you go to get your apology? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and I think there are a number of people who did a good job. You mentioned the New York Post um, and, and the journal wrote about this. And we got criticized mercilessly, suggesting that we were promoting Russian disinformation when, in fact, everyone had done their reporting jobs and verified this information and was indeed absolutely correct. And the one thing that I would add to what Ari just said very correctly is that it, it wasn't just uh, the Bobolinsky interview. We have had all kinds of evidence that this was a story that needed reporting going well back before last summer, whether it was uh, all of the information that came out during the impeachment proceedings about Hunter Biden and Burisma, uh, whether it was the Grassley-Johnson report that came out this fall that talked about suspicious financial transactions that had been flagged. You know, that is an alarm bell for any journalist that there probably is a federal investigation. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that's before 
before you get to Bob Alinsky and plenty of other information that came out. And so the blind eye that was closed to this is just ast astonishing. And I agree with Ari. It's, it's just an, a horrible press failure that denied the American public really crucial information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Fleischer. Um, so the Biden, the Biden team had um, Joe Biden up there for their weekly briefing. Not a single reporter asked about this. I'm just being told that in my ear. So that's breaking here, as we see. <laughs> Jen Psaki, apparently. I'm sorry, not the, not the, not the president-elect. But I did want to ask you this, Ari. So president-elect Biden has been very dismissive of any of these notions for a long time, for about six months, right? So he's just blown it off, said there's nothing there. Is that sustainable? I mean, I guess if they're not even going to ask the incoming press secretary, perhaps so. But I just wonder how crippling this might be as he tries to get his administration out of the gate. Yeah, you just put your finger on it. It is entirely sustainable if the press doesn't dig. You know, you and I, I think, are, are cut from a similar cloth. We're both old fashioned enough to respect the press, to think that the press actually will do their job, that if they see a scandal, they'll cover a scandal and they won't worry about whether it's a D or an R. And I think the Trump years have made it really hard for people who want to be traditionalist and trust the mainstream media because they keep showing that that's no longer the case. And now with Joe Biden, mm -hmm. You know, perhaps there'll be additional scrutiny of who he appoints for attorney general. Perhaps they'll make him take a promise and they make the attorney general at the Senate hearings take a promise not to interfere in the probe of the president elect's son. But then I think they go quiet. And as we all know, what the, pow the power of the press really is, is the follow on questions, the relentlessness, the feeding frenzy, the checking into every lead, the putting in the papers every day. Now it's one and done. They did dutifully report the story involving Hunter Biden. You can't fault the press for not covering it. They did cover it. Six, uh, 30 seconds on ABC, 90 seconds on CBS, 90 seconds on NBC. Mm -hmm. But now it's one and done. They haven't come back to it. Yeah. Kim, maybe a last question to you. Do you think the attorney general, from what you know, did the right thing in you know, not allowing this to come to light while it was still an overt investigation? Covert, yeah, excuse me, covert investigation. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Bill Barr apt, acted absolutely responsibly here. And because of what, uh, sort of what Ari and I have been discussing, look, it's a fundamental precept of the Department of Justice that you do not announce ongoing investigations because the power to ruin someone's reputation uh, forever is, exists simply by saying that they're being investigated, even if there is no evidence to the contrary. And as somebody who wrote about the FBI and DOJ's incredible failings in 2016, that was Hillary Clinton and all the leaks that came out that was that, that was the mm -hmm. weaponization of the Department of Justice and a political presidential campaign against the president. So Bill Barr did the right thing here. The failing is the media. There were all kinds of flags. That's their job to get that and information they, yeah, out. Good point. Uh, good and point. they didn't do it. I tell you what, when I worked at DOJ, I learned 101 ways to say no comment. It was very useful at the time. Ari Fleischer, Kim Strassel, thank you both. Have a good weekend. You too.